bacon. Bacon. Hello? Anyone there? Look down. Bacon? Did you just talk? You think you can do this review? You think you can be honest about it? Your measly channel has less than a thousand subscribers. I wonder what they would think of your insignificant opinion. Well, wait, you can talk. You're, you're food. You think you can eat me? Give it a try. We shall see. I am the great... That never used to happen when I was a vegetarian. Hello bookworms and welcome back to my channel and to another retro review where I do reviews on classic books. Before I start with this review, if you like the idea of listening to videos reviewing classics, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and to click the bell icon so you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. I don't always review classics, but I do focus on them every now and then, and I have an entire playlist dedicated to my retro reviews, so make sure to check it out. Now, today on the video, I'm going to be talking about a book that you've probably already read at school. This is Lord of the Flies by William Golding. But just in case you didn't read it at school or you already forgot, here's a short recap. The book was written in the 1950s and is about a group of young boys who all survive a plane crash and find themselves on a deserted island. They soon start worrying about their survival and then we see two leaders emerge, Ralph and Jack. They both have very different personalities and although they are both leader material, their priorities and leadership style differ greatly. Anyway, after being on an island for a while, the kids divide into different groups, start war with each other and reveal their true wild nature that leads to disasters and more than one fatality. Since, like all of my videos, this is a spoiler-free review, I won't go into analyzing the book, even though this is one of those books that people tend to analyze. You see, this is what you call a concept book. The point isn't necessarily to tell a gripping story, but to give us a what-if scenario. Similarly to books like A Handmaid's Tale or The Girl with All the Gifts, everything is a representative of something, including the characters. And to tell you the truth, I was never a huge fan of concept books. I find that if they are concepty enough to be given this name, it means that the concept overshadowing everything else, like plot, characters, story, etc. And since we're on that point, I also want to share with you that I was never a huge fan of Lord of the Flies. Not when I was a teenager, and not when I reread it for this review. I suppose that from the same reason that I don't like concept books. So after this little disclaimer, let's go into Lord of the Flies. And again, if you are at school or just generally are looking for someone analyzing this book, you're in the wrong video. This is simply my opinion. So since I mentioned that this is a concept book, what is the concept here? Well, if we were left in a lawless, government-less society, we will soon show our true nature, which is wild, mean, and savage. Honestly, I think this is a little too simplistic, which is the main problem here. On one hand, this book was supposed to say something about the society as a whole, but on the other hand, it shows us this concept with only children. Maybe the idea is that children are pure and less contaminated by society, but still, does Golding think that adults, all adults, all of us will behave the same way some of these children will? I suppose some will, but still I am missing a component here. It's like doing a human behavior experiment, but testing a very, very narrow group of subjects. However, something that I really liked about Lord of the Flies was the different leadership styles of Ralph and Jack. At the beginning, before they were categorized into good or bad, I really like how both make valid arguments and both have good intentions. Basically, Ralph says that the more important things are shelter and fire, while Jack thinks that the priority should go to hunting and getting food. I don't know, I just liked how at the beginning, before one of them is very heavily categorized as the bad guy, it shows how 
Good intentions can sometimes escalate into horrible consequences. However, as the book progresses, one of them simply becomes evil, and instead of showing a process of how this happens, it feels like he just realized that there are no adults around to punish him, so he just lets his true nature, evil nature, show. Therefore, I felt like it was less a case of see what happens under these circumstances, and more like this evil individual was let loose. At least that's how I felt. Other than that, I feel like some things in the book did not age well, even though I can't really blame Golding for that. I feel like most kids there don't really talk the way normal kids do, and yes, I am aware of the fact that it takes place in the 50s, but still. There is this funny feeling of English pride, all the kids are English, and therefore they should behave properly at least at the beginning, before they become savages. However, I doubt that many kids, English or non-English, in the 50s would really talk like that. Speaking of talking, the last dialogue in the book, which obviously I will not be getting into, is ridiculous to the level of facepalm. Yes, that's a level. I do think, however, that as a very creepy book, this book is very effective. Usually, when it comes to books aimed at young children, or at least where the protagonists are young children, the danger or the horror usually comes from the adults. Either they don't believe them, so the kids are left alone in order to solve the problem, or the adults themselves are the main villains. But here, they are themselves the antagonist. They are the horror. I know that today most young kids are grown accustomed to horror and gore, but I do think that there is something so raw about the horror of this 1950s novel, with its evil and terror, that I really think it could work even today. Basically, by rereading this book after all these years, I challenge myself to revisit something that I already read as a child, and to see if all those years changed my perspective about it or my opinion. My conclusion? I think that everybody reads this book differently and takes something else from it. And maybe it's more of a question of personality than of age. I didn't like this book as a kid and I am not too crazy about it now as an adult, however, I do appreciate it more. I think the concept was supposed to be that we are all basically evil inside and it's just the law and society that makes us behave. At least that's how a lot of people see this book. However, I think it's more of a show of how sometimes even good intention can lead to disaster. Unfortunately, as I mentioned before, I think some of the process in the middle got a little lost in this book. So bottom line, do I recommend Lord of the Flies? Yeah, sure, why not? It's not very long and it has a very interesting premise. Just try to approach it with an open mind, which I know it's a bit difficult because it is a very famous book and also because a lot of people were introduced to it, not because they wanted to, but because probably at school they were forced to, and then they were probably told how to analyze it. But even just as a creepy story for young people or to introduce young people to classics, that's a really good one. Not amazing, but a pretty cool one. So that's it for my video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, don't forget to click like and show your support by also sharing this video to the world and subscribing to my channel, if you dare. I do want to focus a little bit more on doing classics review. And please comment down below if there is a specific classic or maybe a forgotten gem of a book that you would like me to review. And again, guys, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.